Hi, my name's Benji, and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today, we're looking at Sagrada, a one to four player competitive dice drafting and placement game where you're picking from a finite number of dice and placing them on your, on your board. That also has elements of pattern building and set collection, because you're looking for dice of a certain color and you need to be placing them in a certain order in order to achieve the most points. So this game is named after the Sagrada Familia Basilica, a church that started construction over a hundred years ago and is due to complete probably about the same time that we first land people on Mars. So how's that for patience and dedication? Now you play as artists looking to craft the most beautiful stained glass windows. So let's see how this plays and whether this could be the next game for you. So the object of the game is for you to be the player with the most points at the end of 10 rounds of play. You'll need to draw three face-up public objective cards and three face-up tool cards and these are cards that will allow you to manipulate dice as you play through. Each player will then need to bring their own player board. Each player will also be given one face-down private objective card and two double-sided window pattern cards to choose from. And these show you where you might need to place certain coloured dice and certain numbered dice. In the bottom right hand corner is a number of dots that denote the difficulty level of that window pattern and that will equal the number of favours you start the game with that are to be used to use these tool cards. Once you've made your choice you'll then slide that window pattern card underneath the player board and you're ready to start the game. So all dice start in the opaque bag that comes with the game. And the first player on the first turn is going to draw a number of dice equal to double the number of players plus one. So in this two player example they've drawn and rolled five dice. Now when deciding what dice to pick and where to place them you need to be aware of the following rules. The first dice that's placed on an empty window pattern has to be on the perimeter on the outside. And then the subsequent dice placement rules are that you must place a dice either orthogonally adjacent i.e. left, right, up or down or diagonally adjacent to a dice that's already been placed. You must also be aware of any pre-shaded spaces on your window pattern that you've chosen. So for example, a yellow dice has to be played here and a number five dice has to be played here. The only other restriction is that you cannot place the, a dice of the same colour or number orthogonally adjacent to one you already placed. So here if you place the dice, a blue five dice, you couldn't place either a blue or a number five dice on any of the orthogonally adjacent spaces. So starting with the first player, they're going to pick one dice and place it accordingly. So here player one is going to place their dice there. Play then passes round clockwise to the next player, but in this two player example, that's going to be straight to player number two. And the last player on every turn, so here player two will take one action and then a second action. So ultimately taking two dice. And they're going to take the purple two and place it there. And then the blue four orthogonally adjacent to that there. Play passes then back in an anti-clockwise manner. So here back to player one. And player one gets to pick one final die. Here we're going to go with the purple three. The remaining dice is then placed on the round tracker to denote that that's the end of round one. So when deciding what dice to pick and where to place it, you need to be aware of your private objectives that are kept face down and secret from your opponent. So here for example you're going to get more points the more green dice you draft and the higher their number. And the same here for red dice. These public objectives are going to give you points at the end of the game. So for example, this will give you two points every time you get a set of both a five and six numbered dice on your window pane. And this will give you five points each time you have a column of dice with each space having a different color. Now these tools are available to everyone and will allow you to manipulate your dice throughout the game. So again, for example, this first one will, after you've drafted a dice, allow you to increase or decrease the number of that dice by one. And here, this tool will allow you to circumvent normal dice placement um, requirements by placing a dice that's not adjacent to one you've already placed on your board. 
Now, these are public and available to everyone, and the first time one of them is used by anyone, it will cost that player one favour. However, any subsequent time a particular tool is used, that will then cost two favour each time. Now, play proceeds like that, with the first player going clockwise around the table on each turn until the end of the tenth round, where all of your scores are tallied up with the total you gain from your private objectives and the public objectives, and then the player with the most points is the winner. So that's how this plays. What did I think of it? So who is this game for? Well, it's light to medium weight because it has a shallow learning curve, and it strikes me as a highly accessible game that would appeal to a wide audience. You can comfortably take this round to the parents' house or the grandparents' house and know that there's going to be some fun to be had. So this might be something as well if you might want to motivate those constructors of the real thing by saying, look what a beauty I've been able to construct in a mere 45 minutes. Come on guys and girls, you can do it. We can beat those Mars landings. So you might want to consider this if you liked Blueprints, published by Z-Man Games, because that shares some mechanical likenesses with this. And also Rolling America, published by GameRight, because that has some similar puzzly type pattern building effects that's on display here. So in terms of gameplay, well the word I keep coming back to is elegant in terms of design from top to bottom. They really have incorporated the right amount of thinking on your turn without there being an information overload. Now the way they've been done the drafting as well is really well executed where the first to the penultimate player gets one action and then that last player gets to pick two before they pass back round. That really does hit the right notes. However, an unfortunate byproduct of that is downtime, especially with four players. Now, a game such as this where it's you go, I go and so on, there's always going to be an element of that. But most times you can plan for what you're going to do with your, your next action. Um, because of the finite amount of dice on offer here, there are high odds that whatever plan you make is going to be scuppered by your opponents. Wait, really? Is that next? Actually, I think what the designers have done here is subliminally added uh, a cautionary tale about current society. Where you're, yeah, where you're supposed to spend that downtime thinking about anything this beautiful is worth waiting for. However, I don't want that in my games, thank you very much. Now, all joking aside, you can't have the great without the weight. Move on, Benji, please, for all of our sakes. One last thing on gameplay. The tools again hit really the perfect note. You know, if you want to use those tools in the early game, it's only going to cost you the one favour, but it's going to be less impactful. And then the more you play, it costs you more favours, but the idea being you get more benefit from it. So in terms of the look and feel and theme of the game, well everything inside the box is well produced, especially with those player boards that perfectly evoke that sense of creating a stained glass window. And a big shout out to those beautiful gem dice. I have a lot of time for these types of dice and the colours they've picked have give a real pop and make for a really vibrant and immersive experience. I would have liked to have seen perhaps a little pricey on the basilica itself and maybe even the process of staining glass. But that doesn't detract and shouldn't be essential from what is really a fun and immersive experience that allows you to get both your stain and your glass on. So with all that being said, Dice vs Guards are going to give you a final score of 8 out of 10. Now any game that I can sit down with both the good lady and the all mother and have a really nice time is always going to get a thumbs up from me. And that should give you the confidence that this would be a wonderful gift for yourself or for gamers from all different types and walks of life. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.